I'm Diane Alston. I'm an extension entomologist with Utah State University. Um, in this time of social distancing due to COVID-19 virus, we are um, making a field day via video this year. So I won't wear the mask for the whole time, but uh, just to give you an idea of, of what it's like to, to do field research with COVID-19 um, impacts, it's not nearly as much fun. So my topic today is uh, woolly apple aphid. Woolly apple aphid is one of the more tenacious aphids in terms of its management. And it has a little different uh, biology and life cycle than some of the more, the other common aphids in apple and other fruit trees. So woolly apple aphid, um, a big key factor of why it's so challenging is it has a lot of woolly, waxy material that covers it and that makes it um, more impenetrable to um, insecticides, to weather, to predators, to things that are going to uh, come and, and want to uh, eat it or take advantage of it. Underneath that white, waxy, woolly covering, um, the aphids themselves tend to be a reddish brown in color in the adult stage and in the immature stage they're more of a salmon colored. So this, this aphid is actually native to North America. Many of our pest aphids um, are not native to North America, but this particular one is. And it actually, um, its primary host in the eastern United States is the American elm. And so the American elm is its primary host and then where it would overwinter and lay eggs and then during the spring and summer, it would move, it moved on to apple, where it would develop colonies like this. Here in the western United States, we don't have um, American elm. And so here, woolly apple aphid has adapted or evolved to stay on apple trees year round. And so here in the west, they primarily overwinter on the roots of the tree. And on the roots, they can form these galls. Um, from their feeding damage as, as, they, as they feed there, and it's a good nutrient source for them throughout the, the winter time. And then in the summertime, they move up into the canopy of the tree and spread and start to um, develop new colonies. However, we have noticed here in, in northern Utah that as our winters have become more mild, we start to see more and more aphids that will overwinter actually on the above ground part of the tree. And so we'll show some close-ups of that in a little bit. But they can overwinter on the pruning scars, so the old scars, especially where they're right, on, right near or on the main trunk. They can also overwinter on these twig or limb galls that the aphids form during the summer. And a few of them reside there throughout the winter and survive to the next year. One of the key factors in managing woolly apple aphid, besides insecticides, which we'll talk about in just a moment, is rootstock selection. So the Malling Merton rootstock series, which is an older one, the MM series, um, was developed with uh, trying to develop some resistance for woolly apple aphid. Also, there's a newer Geneva rootstock series that is also resistant to woolly apple aphid, and it's based on um, the apple um, species Malus robusta to, that provides that resistance to, to the tree, to the aphids. So what kinds of injury do woolly apple aphids cause? So as they're feeding on the above limbs, shoots, new growth, you can see some out here on, right here on the, um, the new limbs, they, um, they cause um, a reduction in the vigor and the vitality of the tree. They can yield to fruit reduction, uh, yield reduction. They can russet fruit. They'll form um, honeydew, which is the sticky material that they, uh, the, from the sap, the excess sap that they feed on out of the phloem tissues of the tree. And that will drip down onto the apples, especially in the stem bowls. You get this black sooty mold that will grow there, and that can be difficult to wash off. So the timing of activity of the aphid is again following mild winters. You'll see a lot of them overwintering up on the above ground parts following more severe winters, they tend to show up later, so more not until June and July when they have to move up um, from the, the roots of the tree. 